Hey, what's up guys? Sessie Chirp here, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about something that I, I think a lot of you guys are probably already familiar with. Maybe some of you are familiar with the terms I'm using, but uh, and maybe some of you are familiar with what's going on, but I'm sure there's a lot of you guys who don't even know uh, what's going on, how to describe it, or, or what causes it, and that is why hype is... Well, I'm going to be talking about hype, but more specifically I'm going to be talking about why hype is bad um, for gamers. Specifically for MMOers, that's what I'm going to be talking about today, but this does apply to other gamers as well. <clears throat> so before we get started, we need to um, kind of determine, you know, what is hype, and it basically, it just refers to the uh, level of excitement uh, surrounding something. So in today's case, we're going to be talking about MMORPGs, but it could be any game, or it could be a movie, or a book, um, it could be a concert, it's literally anything, it just refers to the level of excitement for anything. So, you know, you like games, I like games, and uh, of course we're naturally going to be excited to play games, especially ones that we've been looking forward to for a while or any upcoming good looking game that we want to play. So we get hyped, we get hyped, we get excited for games um, when they're getting ready to come out and uh, or even years before they come out, you know, we start getting excited and discussing the game. So um, what I'm gonna be talking about is why getting excited for games or getting hyped up for games and a lot of times can just really hurt you uh, and it's not great as a gamer to be super excited for a game. So um, now that we know kind of what hype is, um, let's talk about exactly where hype comes from and there are two major sources from where hype comes from There are the people making the video games you know, the video game companies or the developers and then there's a the gaming community and these are the primary two sources for um, I mean, it's pretty much the only two sources that I can think of where hype would actually come from a video game and both of these have um, You know different methods um, of creating hype video game companies or developers create the hype literally they pretty much create the hype for their video game whereas the video game community have like what I what I refer to as like a natural hype it's a hype that is created just from talking about the video game literally so uh, but to talk more about the developers and how they create hype n the number one method by far that they that they that they uh, create hype is through the trailers for their video game and uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have fell victim to this I mean I have all my friends have you know, a, a new game is coming out, new MMOs in development, it's a couple years down the road, and they release the first major trailer for the game, and uh, it looks really kick-ass. I mean, you get, you see this, and you're just nerd-chilling all over your body, and because it's incredible. It looks absolutely insane. The best example of this is probably Star Wars Galaxies. Their trailers were absolutely phenomenal, and even if you didn't like the game, if you watched those trailers, I'm sure, you know, you really enjoyed nothing else. If nothing else, you enjoyed the trailers. So... Specifically, when the Star Wars Galaxies, uh, or not Star Wars Galaxies, when the, I've been saying Star Wars Galaxies, I meant to say when the SWOTOR trailers. When the SWOTOR trailers came out, Star Wars Galaxies is a much older MMO. When the SWOTOR trailers came out, I remember me and my friends, we all saw those trailers and we got so excited for those trailers. And even in the back of our mind, we know we've been playing MMOs for like 15 years. I mean, I've been playing since the beginning of MMOs, right? I mean, pretty much the, from the beginning of MMOs, I've, I've pretty much been playing them. So in the back of our mind, we knew that the trailer really didn't mean much because you could put anything in a trailer and it doesn't necessarily mean that what they do in the trailer is going to be anything like the game. Now trailers are used to kind of show you the atmosphere or the game style, you know, basically how the game is going to be and what kind of uh, atmosphere is going to be created in or environment. But in the back of our mind, you know, we always know that. We know that the trailer is not anything, you know, it's not going to be anything compared to, or it's not going to be anything like the game. The game has hard limitations, whereas the trailer can do anything they want. So, watching these trailers, it's very hard to, you know, keep yourself from thinking the game's going to be like that. And the game developers know this. They know that trailers build huge loads of hype. And they know that, you know, to have a successful launch for a video game, a trailer plays a very important part. And this is so important that a lot of these companies are actually hiring third-party uh, companies or agencies to actually create their trailers for them. They want a company that specializes in just doing, you know, like CGI trailers for their game. So this is a good example of how hype gets built um, from the game developers. Another method that they can use, uh, and it's, it's kind of a, um, a split, is like features for their game. Now, obviously, they don't create features to hype their game because games have to have like features in them. But a lot of game companies will take a feature in their game and really run with it and talk a lot about it and make it sound way better than what it's going to be. Guild Wars 2 is a perfect example of this because um, 
they really hyped up the no trinity system. If you don't know what that is, World of Warcraft uses a trinity system, for example. It means there's a, a tank, a healer, and a DPS, you know, in every group. You have to have those in every group, um, where unless you have a group full of death knights. But, uh, or, or versus like Guild Wars 2, where they said they didn't have a trinity system, so that means everyone can basically fulfill every role at any time. It means that there's no dedicated tank, no dedicated healer, no dedicated DPS, or that they can all do it at the same time, rather. So, now this feature sounds awesome on paper, but I even did a video back on it back in like August or something of last year. But, if you really think about how it would work, it seems impossible. You could not have real competitive PvE in a game with no training system. So they really took this and ran with it and really talked about their game a lot using the no training system as like a, a major selling point. But we all know how that turned out. You know, the, 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 it, the PvE in that game was, to be totally honest, was a complete joke. Uh, soloing was okay, leveling was okay, but anything in dungeons, you know, it's just kind of silly. So obviously it can't work very well. That kind of method, that kind of system can't work very well. And though maybe it can work, they sold it so high that there's no way the players were going to um, have their expectations met of what that was really going to be like. So those are two major things that the game developers do to build up hype. There are lots of others, but those are the only two I'm going to talk about. You guys kind of get the idea. And I mentioned before that the other method uh, or the other source of hype comes from the gaming community. Now, the way that the gaming community generates hype is, again, like I said, it's a natural, what I refer to as like a natural hype, because... Whenever a major game's coming out, like we have Wildstar on the horizon, we have Hearthstone on the horizon, which isn't an MMO, well, it's not an MMORPG, but it's still, you know, I guess it still is an MMO, but it's a TCG. We had Titan until yesterday, <laughs> they announced that the game was going to be reset, and so major, you know, huge delay on the game. Um, but anyways, we have these games coming up, there's going to be dozens of websites that are dedicated to coverage about this game, and these websites are going to have lots of followers, and they're going to have a forum board that's going to have tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand members that are signed up on that forum board. And these forums are generating millions of posts discussing a game that's not even out yet. So what happens is you go to this forum board because you're someone interested in the game, you sign up, and you, you start reading and reading and reading. You read all these threads about how great this game is going to be, about you know all this theory crafting of uh, you know what's going to be the best race class combination or uh, the most optimal five-man dungeon group or who's going to be the best in PvP, what class is going to be overpowered and so forth. You read about the features and stuff. And what happens is, though you may not notice it, you, I mean, well, usually you should notice it, you're going to be getting really excited to play this game because... A lot of other people are talking about it and they're excited, so it's kind of contagious. You're going to start getting excited for it by just exposing yourself to more information about the game. So again, this is what I refer to as a natural hype because just reading it, just um, being on these websites where people are talking about how great the game is going to be is going to naturally get you more excited for the game. So like I said, that's, that's why I refer to as natural hype. There are, of course, websites out there that are specifically trying to hype people up. I mean, my Learn to Adapt series was a series that I actually did because I wanted to get people excited to play the game. That's the whole reason why I did that series. The same with my Miss of Pandaria coverage. To an extent, obviously, I mean, I had I had maybe maybe 15 or 20 people post saying that they, on my, uh, like, comment on my past videos saying that they were going to play Guild Wars 2 solely based, or th they decided to play Guild Wars 2 after they watched my videos because I made the game look really fun. I feel a little bit guilty that they wasted $50 for that game, you know, <laughs> due to my getting them uh, hyped up for it because the game... It, it wasn't that bad, but it, you know, if you took your time and played it really casually, I'm sure it was really fun. But um, anyways, getting off topic. Uh, but like I said, those are the two major sources where hype comes from. So uh, one quick kind of side note I want to address is why hype is a bigger issue now than it was years ago. And the main reason why, it, it's very obvious, I'm sure a lot of you guys already have this figured out, but it's just because information is so easy to, um, to come by these days. And what I mean by that is everyone has the internet, everyone has a smartphone, um, and you, everyone's going to have access to all this information, not to mention the gaming community as a whole is a hundred times larger than it was years ago. And an example of this is like uh, back in the day when EverQuest was the big MMO on the block. I mean, people were playing that on like their IBMs and Dells that had like, uh, you know, like maybe tops they would have 512 megabytes of RAM. Everybody was you know, like kicking up their their 56k dial-up connection, which maybe you guys, some of you guys probably don't know what that is, but it's just really slow-ass internet, and the computers were trash too. And so loading into this game would sometimes take like 
I don't know, it could take literally minutes to get logged into this game because of how low, how slowly your character would load into the world. So, again, uh, the gaming wasn't a mainstream thing back then, or it was, but not necessarily, PC gaming wasn't, especially not online PC gaming, it was not that, that mainstream back then. So there wasn't a major community out there talking about the games. So, obviously, that, that affected hype quite a bit, um, but just in general, there were fewer gamers, so there was less hype going around. So now that we understand all this, we can discuss why hype is bad for you, or why it's bad for me, or why it's bad for anyone that likes video games. Well, the main reason why is because a lot of companies are out to set, you know, uh, a certain level of expectation for their game through these trailers. And using these trailers, we get super excited for the games, right? I mean, it's, it's almost inevitable. It's very hard not to get excited for these games. So what happens is, you know, you watch a trailer for a game, you see it, it's awesome. You go to these forum boards, you participate, you talk about it. everyone's excited for this game. Everyone's talking about how great this game is going to be. And then, uh, so you have these super high expectations of how great this game is going to be, of how great some of these features in this game are going to be, how great it's going to be not to have to sit in Orgamar waiting for a dedicated tank and healer because anyone can do it. You know, so you have all these expectations in your mind of how great the game is going to be, and no game is ever going to be as great as a lot of people think it's going to be. If you get super excited for a game and you just get hyped to, you know, oblivion, then nine times out of ten, your expectations for this game are not going to be met. Because I've never played a game that I researched and that I did, uh, you know, a lot of t I, that I invested a lot of time into studying into before the game came out that I was completely satisfied with. Now, on the other hand, there's been several games that I played that I knew nothing about, and going into them, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, because I didn't know anything about the game, I had no expectations for the game, and going into the game, the game was a lot more fun than what I could have imagined it was, it was going to be. So, it sounds weird, but, you know, looking into a game too much, researching a game too much, watching a video game trailer 150 times because of how cool it is, is not good for you if you want to have fun in the game. And the ultimate objective of any gamer, I think, is to have fun. I mean, a lot of us do it for competitive reasons, um, but at the end of the day, if a game's not fun, we're probably just not going to play it. So if you want to maximize the amounts of fun you're going to have, you got to try to keep in check how much excitement you build for yourself for a game. So just remember that, and that, that's, that's the main reason why getting hyped for a game is bad. You, you, you're going to have such a high expectation for the game, 9 times out of 10 the game's going to let you down because you, know, you thought it was going to be way better than what it is, and in reality, I'm sure if you thought about it, you knew how great, exactly how good the game was going to be. So my ultimate advice is um, going to be whenever you're looking into a new game like Wildstar or any other game for that matter but I, I you know I've been looking into Wildstar quite a bit whenever you're looking into it try to remember hype and try to you know kind of evaluate yourself, evaluate yourself to see if you're getting actually too excited for this game when looking at a game and its strong selling points like its features like double jumping for example in Wild, that, that's probably a bad example but any feature in any game try to think about really on paper or in an actual game, what it's going to be like. Because a lot of these ideas on paper sound amazing. But if you try to think about how they would work in a game like WoW, for example, which is kind of like the staple of MMOs, it's kind of like the go-to model for MMOs, then suddenly you find yourself realizing a lot of these features, a lot of these new systems, these, uh, systems that these games are recommending, or you know, they say they're going to uh, you know, put into their game, a lot of them don't sound so great once you really think about how they would work in a real MMO. So just remember that uh, next time you're looking into an MMO. And uh, I hope you guys understand why I did this video, why you know why I'm saying what I'm saying. Because I want everyone to have fun in games. I mean, that's all our ultimate objective when we go to play a new game, is to have as much fun as we can while playing it. It's the same for myself. Like I said, I, I like to get the, you know into the hardcore thing as well. You know, and be in that first small percentile that hits level cap and, you know, world first, server first, and so forth. But the problem is, um, my, you know, your, your ultimate, if you look back on games that you played in the past, you probably, when you first became like a PC game or something, you probably did not do as much research for a game before you played it. And if you look back to the first MMO you played, you will probably have more fond memories of playing that game than what you will for any other game after that. Because you already, after you played your first MMO, you had certain expectations and you expected a new MMO to be even better because it is newer after all. So just remember that, and I could go on all day talking about this because there's certainly a lot more stuff to cover, but I think I'm going to leave it there. I think you guys get the, the point of uh, what I'm trying to say. So that's all. I hope, you, I hope it's been helpful for you guys. I hope you've learned something. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys next time.